Thank you very much. Right Honorable Dr. Edouard Ngirenhe, Prime Minister of the Republic of Rwanda. Honorable Minister of Education, Training and Innovation from Namibia. Excellence Ministre des Enseignements du Niger. Honorable Minister of Education, Science and Technology from Tanzania. Ministers representing the government of Rwanda and government institutions. Kappa Secretary General and Secretariat, as well as members of the Kappa, heads of and representatives of Polytechnic and Technical Universities, the youth here present, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, good morning again. I'm very pleased to welcome you to this 2019 edition of the Commonwealth Association of Technical Universities and Polytechnics in Africa, CAPA, International Conference, where we look at how to build partnerships for the promotion of TVET for innovation, entrepreneurship, and youth employment in Africa. This official opening ceremony follows the Youth Forum that took place yesterday because obviously we have learned that we cannot discuss of the youth without the youth. And it also follows the opening panel discussion this morning that called indeed for a paradigm shift in terms of advancing TVET and placing TVET where it belongs, meaning at the center of national development priorities and as a key way to ensure that the, the youth that we are that is coming to the labor force is indeed skills, skilled and can also self-employ. This is going to be, of course, uh, the official opening that will lead to more general and inside and in-depth discussions this coming afternoon and this coming days. Without further ado, and for her welcome remarks, I would like to welcome the Secretary General of CAPA, Mrs. Jaho Esfal, who is going to, as the host of the conference, officially welcome us to this opening ceremony. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chair. Honorable Prime Minister, please allow me to give heartfelt welcome from the Commonwealth Association of Technical Universities and Polytechnics in Africa. Our host minister, education minister, Honorable Eugene Mutumura, who is ably being represented by the youth minister of Rwanda, Honorable Rosemary Mabazi, all other ministers from the Republic of Rwanda, distinguished ministers, from Niger, from Namibia, and from Tanzania. Thank you very much for honoring our invitation on this very important 41st anniversary of Kappa International Conference. The Deputy Chair of the Executive Board of Kappa, the Executive Members of the executive board of the Kappa, executive distinguished minister, um, members, the distinguished members of Kappa. And when I say that, I mean salam alaikum, I mean bonjour, I mean good morning to Africa. Kappa, as we all know, had been in existence 
for 41 years. We celebrated our 40th anniversary last year in Abuja. And we are honored, deeply honored, really having the Republic of Rwanda as the newest member country of Kappa. And this was last year to host such a beautiful, formidable event that has impressed and is inspiring all. I had some few chats with some colleagues and I start to pity the next government that is going to host Kappa Conference because the Republic of Rwanda has set the bar so high that yes, it's a big task for the incoming um, host country. Thank you very much, the Republic of Rwanda, but thank you very much, the local organizing committee that has been headed and he had worked tirelessly to bring up this formidable forum. Dr. Gashumba, I salute you. It's my great honor and privilege on behalf of the executive board of Kappa, and of course on my own humble self as the secretary general, the members of the Kappa secretariat and the local organizing committee to welcome you all to this forum. The conference is coming at a time when Africa is confronted with numerous problems of youth unemployment due to policy inadequacies or lack of innovations in Tibet and entrepreneurship. Hence, the theme of this year's conference, Building Partnerships for the Promotion of Tibet for Innovation, Entrepreneurship, and Youth Employment in Africa. Honorable Prime Minister, Honorable Ministers present, you will agree with me that the theme is relevant as it is all encompassing in addressing the problem of youth in Africa. We have invited distinguished personalities and experts in these areas who will deliver captivating statements which shall form the basis for further discussions during the course of the week. I think we have all had our appetites west this morning when we have the magnificent um, forum of guest speakers that had started really. And I wouldn't even start say started, they have really touched the basis for us as to what the theme of the conference is. Africa, according to the World Bank, um, talked about the escalating figure of youth unemployment. And the figure is not going down. In other words, we are being addressed as stakeholders to address the situation and see how youth could be um, engaged meaningfully. And I think all of you would understand and would appreciate that a lot of studies have been carried out and it's all directing towards youth employment and how this could be curbed. The, the results of many of these studies would indicate that skill acquisition is the answer to youth employment. Getting technical education, getting the skills, acquiring the skills is not enough. We started the discussion yesterday and we all realized at the forum that everybody accepted that yes, it's good to have the skills to make yourself employable, whether it is to seek for employment or to get self-employed. But then in addition to that, we need the entrepreneurial skills. At the end of the day, whatever or wherever you find yourself, as far as the area of specialization is concerned, then you will be able to market those skills and give employment and also create employment. So entrepreneurship really is critical in really moving forward despite the technical qualifications that are acquired by this youth. Honorable Prime Minister, honorable ministers present, distinguished guests, youth delegates present, there is growing realization 
that Tibet skills is necessary together with entrepreneurship. And for entrepreneurship to flourish, a reasonable infrastructure of service institutions in financial, administrative, legal, and educational fields are needed. Unfortunately, these factors are not adequately provided for in Africa. It is therefore necessary to analyze critically the political and the economic conditions. The reason why the educational, the ministerial educational forum has been institutionalized in CAPAS international conferences. The first, and that was the maiden, was in Abuja last year, and we are to see the second one later on in, this afternoon, um, and we are going to be um, hosted by our honorable minister, uh, Madam Rosemary, at the Educational Ministerial Forum later on today. Because yes, we realize we've been doing very well in our own little corners as African countries, that we have been talking about Tibet, but many a times we come back and see that the Tibet that we are talking about is more of rhetorics than action. And some of these answers are always attributed to lack of political will. In most of the cases, they go back to say, yes, this is what we want to do, but then we have so many constraints. Notably, we always talk about the funding issue of it. And that is why Kappa, at the board level, sat down, looked at it, and said, look, we need to involve the governments, African governments. And as a result, the Ministerial Education Forum was institutionalized starting from last year. The Kappa Executive Board has also resolved to transform Kappa into an all-inclusive Tibet organization. Each time you talk about Kappa, and you start with Commonwealth Association, it's like, well, if, what about if I'm not a member of the Commonwealth? So therefore, I cannot be a member of Kappa. And then this is all because of history. That when Kappa was formed back in 1977, in Accra, Ghana, it was like the education ministers from Commonwealth countries that came together and decided on a platform that would alleviate and push, Kappa, uh, push uh, Tibet forward. And that was how Kappa was formed. But it has evolved. The membership of Kappa should not only be for speak, uh, English speaking countries. And as a result, the executive board has resolved to bring in, make it an all inclusive. Because now we are not talking about Commonwealth um, countries, we're talking about Pan African, Africa in general. And as a result, it is now going to be an African association, an African movement. <laughs> Kappa, in addition, has also uniquely connected with the Africa Union Agenda 2063 vision, the Africa we want. And the priorities highlighted by the African Union Commission have been embraced by Kappa. Kappa has also deepened the relationship and collaboration to process and implement the continental strategy on Tibet, the CESA, and also the Youth Skills Initiative of the African Union Commission. We are also championing the establishment and harmonization of competency-based education and training. We had very effective discussions um, this morning on CBET. And uh, as an African association, it is our mandate to see how CBET can be propelled in Africa. We have seen that many countries, shall I say few countries, are doing very well in the promotion of CBET because it has been realized how effective it is for youth to have hands-on and to go out with skills to be able to make themselves employable. With over 200 member institutions as members of Kappa, spreading across 19 African countries, 
Kappa demonstrates a well-integrated and formidable profile of technical universities, polytechnics, and technical colleges that are oriented towards knowledge and technical skills acquisition for the world of work. The working ambit of Kappa institution is centrally among students and trainees that are predominantly youth. As a cotton raiser, and I want to use this opportunity before I end my statement, I have highlighted issues that are key to the theme of this conference, that Kappa is working with major stakeholders to find solutions to and the way forward for Tibet in Africa. We salute the President of Rwanda, His Excellency Paul Kagame, the Government of Rwanda for hosting us. Thank you very much, um, Prime Minister, on behalf of the Kappa Secretariat. This conference is an important milestone for the Kappa fraternity in not only welcoming Rwanda into the family of Kappa, like I said before, but we also strongly believe that this conference is a total commitment to making Tibet achieve much impact on economic development in Africa. My appreciation on behalf of the Kappa Secretariat and of course of the Executive Board, I want to appreciate all member countries, I would say all member country governments, present and not, for the support of Tibet. The government officials of Tibet boards and organizations that are present here, the member institutions, formidable member institutions, without them, there is no Kappa. We thank you for your commitment and for your support throughout these four decades of Kappa's existence. Heads of institutions, principals, rectors, VCs, we thank you very much for your patronage and also for your continuous and unflinching support to Kappa. Stakeholders and partners, the AUC, Youth Division, the GIZ, the Standard Group, we thank you very much. We appreciate you for your support and for contributing to this formidable uh, ambience that we find ourselves in today. Ham Jambo, thank you. Merci, I'm grateful. Thank you very much, Mrs. Fall, for these uh, comprehensive uh, welcome remarks, and also reiterating and reminding the reasons why we are here. I would like to welcome now the Professor Laila Abubakar, who is uh, the Kappa Executive Board Deputy Chair for the Eastern Region, and also the Vice Chancellor of uh, the Technical University of Mombasa in Kenya. You're welcome. Our right revenant, honorable prime minister, Dr. Edward Ngirete, honorable ministers who are present here today from Niger, Tanzania, Namibia, other ministers from Rwanda who have been our hosts, country executive ministers who are present here, directors, all protocols observed, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. Mraho. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. <laughs> On behalf of Kappa and our invited delegates, we wish to sincerely extend our gratitude to the government of Rwanda for hosting us and the, and, uh, the warm welcome that we have received 
and the generous hospitality. As, as the SG said, they have, the Rwanda government and the people have raised the bar to quite high. And with their generosity, some of us are already learning Kenya Rwanda. As you are all aware, in recent years, we have had a keen interest and upsurge in technical and vocational education and training from both regional and international communities. However, this acceleration has had some major challenges as you heard earlier on during the panel discussion. Indeed, the social demographic changes, growing youth unemployment, persistent and widening inequalities both across and within the countries, the increased interdependency of all countries in the context of intensified economic integration, increased pressures on natural resources and associated climate changes, as well as the pace of development of information and communication technology, has posed important challenges in the technical and vocational education and training. There is therefore a need for TIVET and CAPA to engage more systemically with these concerns. I believe this conference will provide a unique regional platform for both practitioners, experts, and policymakers to share knowledge and reflection on the future of TVET. As you've just heard, the theme of the conference is on building partnerships for the promotion of technical and vocational education and training for innovation, entrepreneurship, and youth employment. What we are saying here is that if we are to overcome the challenges which we have already discussed, then there is a great need for us to work together. Working in silos is not going to help us. We have to work together. You find that countries like in Kenya, where I come from, we have embraced the TVET and we've come up with policies in place. Other countries like Rwanda are doing the same. Similarly, other countries in Africa. But there is no common uh, integration. Everybody is doing their own things. Remember, with TVET, there is the issue of international standardization. We have to standardize all our, uh, our, our procedures and our skills. Where there's a lot of migration. So if somebody is in Kenya and wants to move to another country and has had the skills, then he should actually be easily employed in that other country. So the issue of collaboration is extremely important. To Kappa, today marks a major milestone in international and regional cooperation after the influential and successful First China Africa TVET Cooperation Conference, which took place in Nairobi in June this year. Again, we have also involved the youth since we are talking about youth unemployment. So Kappa has decided to have a youth for forum preceding the, uh, the, the, this conference. This is the main reason for this is to bring everyone on board. So personally, I believe that for us to move far in our cause, the TVET cause, we do not have a choice. We just have to come together and collaborate, collaborate, and collaborate. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And of course, thank you for highlighting again the importance of the partnership components of what we're talking about here. And of course, we've heard that we still have a lot of challenges, but there are also strides that are being made. And some of those strides are also being made by key actors uh, in the sector. 
And this is the objective or the essence of the CAPA annual awards of excellence that were initiated five years ago. The objective of those awards are, of course, to highlight and to acknowledge the substantive contribution of some key actors and organizations to the technical uh, and uh, the socioeconomic development in Africa. But also, as you know, when you are awarded, you're also put in the spotlight to do more and of course, I do believe that those that have been the recipients of the awards, such as uh, Dr. Nkosa Zana Dlamini Zuma or Tony Elumelu, have really continued gaining their awards again and again. So I would like to take this time to um, invite those one that are going to award and those that are going to be awarded. Uh, the 2019 Kappa Awards of Excellence uh, for Development uh, are Honorable Badara Alieu Jouf, who is the Minister of Higher Education, Research, Science, and Technology from the Gambia. And I would like to welcome Dr. Cole here in front that will be receiving the award on his behalf. And of course, awarding means that they have been selecting, um, selected among many people. Thank you very much. So you will be receiving the CAPA 2019 Awards of Excellence for Development in Africa. And we also have two awardees who are going to receive the Recognition Award for Distinguished Service to CAPA. And these are Crystal Ventures. Crystal Ventures ably represented by Isa Irame, who is the Chief Corporate Officer of Crystal Ventures. If she's in the room, she might come here in the front. Thank you very much. And we also have a second award in that category for Mr. Videdi John Bonds, who is going to be ably represented by his second half. Or the first half, we never know. Mr. Bideri John Bonds is the chairperson of the Board of Directors of Workforce Development Authority, WDA. And of course, these awards are offered by CAPA, so I would like to first welcome the Secretary General of CAPA, and also, of course, our guest of honor, Right Honorable Dr. Edouard Nguirenhe, the Prime Minister of the Republic of Rwanda, who are going to be awarding and providing the awards that are on their way. The guest of honor is awarding the CAPA 2019 Awards of Excellence for Development in Africa that will go to the Honorable Minister from the Gambia. Thank you very much. We'd also like to award Crystal Ventures, represented by Isa Irame, as a recognition awards for distinguished service to CAPA. Thank you very much. And we also want to award Mr. and Mrs. Videri John. They are receiving as well the recognition awards for distinguished service to Kappa. Thank you very much, our guests, for coming in front and officially awarding our awardees today. And I think and I do believe that awarding ceremony is usually very lively and very happy, right? And I see, I saw some of you enjoying the music that we had or the traditional dances that we had. So I would like to really congratulate again our awardees in pure Rwandan style with Inganzo Gadi or the great troupe 
that are representing our joy for the awards before we proceed to the next session.
as a good enough celebration of the awards. Can we please give them another round of applause? And for all of those who are wondering, because we have talked about the youth and the youth forum, for those who are wondering, but where is the youth? And complaining that we do not have youth voice on this opening ceremony, may I respond to you that we have an able representative of the youth of the Rwandan youth here with us, Honorable Rosemary Mbebazi, the Minister of Youth in the Republic of Rwanda. You are welcome for your remarks. Thank you. I think you saw part of the Tivet. Did you enjoy this? Yes. That is the culture Tivet. <laughs> Thank you very much. Right Honorable Prime Minister, the Honorable Ministers from uh, respective countries that are represented here, the Executive Chairperson of CAPA, the Secretary General of CAPA, the Vice Chancellors of Technical Universities and Polytechnics, heads of re and representatives of public and private institutions, development partners, youth representatives, though they say they represent, but I know they are here, youth representatives, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It's a great pleasure and honor to have you all here today to participate in this momentous occasion, the Kigali Kappa Conference. This is another important opportunity for all of us to share the best practices and innovative ideas to promote technical and vocational education and training for youth quick employment. On behalf of the government of Rwanda, I welcome you all to this opening ceremony of 2019 Kappa International Conference. I also want to thank you all who organized and played various roles to make this event a success. It is important that you use this event to share freely your knowledge and experiences, which will help make it more impactful for Rwanda, Kappa's communities, as well as for all other countries represented here today. The main theme of the 2019 Kigali Kappa International Conference is to build partnerships for the promotion of TVET, for innovation, entrepreneurship and youth employment in Africa. It will be an opportunity to showcase and inspire the world-class excellence in skills and introduce youth to a variety of skills careers, public talks on different themes related to skills development approaches and challenges faced by different national and international actors, as well as showcase different innovations from TVET sector. The CAPA 2019 International Conference will focus on five key objectives. Number one is to raise the need for rapid industrialization of African economies and bring them to center stage for policy initiatives and strategic actions by governments and stakeholders. Two, to highlight issues on public-private partnerships in expanding TVET space and developing vocational education and skills in African countries. Three, is to promote a keen awareness and interest among TVET institutions in the development visions 
at continental and country levels, and to enhance the leadership and management capacity to key in, adapt, and translate such visions into development projects at institutional level. Four is to provide exposures, build strategic partnerships to enhance skilled technical manpower and industrial development in Africa. Last but not least is to create a shared understanding of Africa's cultural and religious diversity and commitment to youth empowerment for social harmony, national building, and development in Africa. I want to, as I conclude, I want to thank all partners, especially the private sector present, because jobs cannot be created by government. The government provides an enabling environment, and the private sector creates the jobs. I also want to encourage the youth present today. I believe you've been listening, and you keep on listening. But I advise that you grab the opportunity at your disposal. Use your competences to effect changes you wish to see in the society. To the policymakers, development partners, the civil society, it's our call to create an enabling environment to provide an ecosystem that enables youth become who they wish to be. Let us be the bridge that connects the youth to opportunities. I want to take this opportunity, right now, Prime Minister, to invite you to deliver your keynote address and open, openly, or officially open the 2019 Kigali Conference. I thank you for your kind attention. Honorable Ministers here present, Secretary General of uh, Commonwealth Association of Polytechnics in Africa, CAPA, representatives of public and private institutions, development partners, representative of youth here present, distinguished participants. Let me start by wishing you all a very warm welcome to Rwanda and to 2019 Chigari Kappa Conference. I would like to extend a special gratitude to you all for your participation and wish you a good stay in Chigari. As we all know, the growing problem of youth unemployment in Africa is a major concern for many governments. A big number of young Africans sometimes without needed skills, leave the school system every year in search of jobs. These young people should be encouraged to complete their studies so as to be qualified for the labor market and even be able to create their own jobs. Supporting the young people to acquire job-related skills is therefore a key developmental challenge for all governments in Africa. Technical and vocational education training is one of the most powerful tools to fight poverty. It does not only provide skills to gain paid employment, but also to promote and support creativity, innovation, and entrepreneurship in order to develop the ability to create jobs and employment opportunities. Africa needs skilled workers. In particular, competent technicians are needed to fill the gap in various sectors of the economy, including construction industry, energy sector, water distribution and sanitation systems, and large public works. Trained workers are also in short supply in the hospitality and agro-processing sectors. One of the seven aspirations of agenda, the Agenda 20, 2063 is that we need an Africa whose development is people-driven, 
relying on the potential of its people. Like many other African countries, Rwanda aspires to be a knowledge-based economy. The national transformation, transformation strategy is framed around three pillars, including the economic transformation. Our strategic innovation in education sector is currently giving a special attention to TVET, among others. As government, we believe that TVET skills are one of the drivers that support the economic transformation we want in our country. And this is only possible if graduates from TVET are highly skilled and uh, competitive on the labor market. In this regard, our target in the National Strategy for Transformation 2017-2024 is to increase the number of students attending TVET schools to 60% 60, 60 by 2024 from 31.1 in 2017. This is expected to address the challenge of mismatch in labor markets. And uh, the implementation of this strategy is ongoing in collaboration with the uh, private sector in Rwanda. As uh, indicated in the report, the most competitive economies are talent-driven economies. To succeed in that way, African countries must therefore invest in the education of its young population and create employment for their gained knowledge and skills. If African countries are to become talent-driven, we still need to educate our youth and encourage them to embrace labor mobility opportunities. Therefore, Africa youth should take advantage of African continental free trade area in terms of free movement of labor as an added opportunity for them. Distinguished guests, before I conclude my remarks, I want to thank all partners for organizing the Kigali, Convention, the Kigali Commonwealth Association Polytechnic in Africa conference. I believe that uh, Rwanda and other, particip other participating countries will gain from this uh, great opportunity. I would like especially to acknowledge the role that Commonwealth Association of Polytechnics in Africa has played in the past 41 years since its conception in promoting technical and vocation education and training as a major driver of economic development. I wish you all fruitful deliberation and I hereby declare this 2019 Kigali Commonwealth Association of Polytechnics in Africa conference officially open. I thank you for your kind attention. Thank you very much, right, Honorable Prime Minister. And I know that for such events, we would like to at least have a souvenir of the event. And I would like to welcome, if the right Honorable allow us, the first table for a souvenir picture here in front. So that the young people of tomorrow will acknowledge that something happened during the 2019 Kappa Conference in Kigali. The first table, yes, on both sides. But of course, there will be also other photo opportunities uh, later for everyone. May I ask everyone to look at the cameras and say Kappa.
Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Right Honorable Prime Minister and the distinguished guests for officiating this official opening ceremony of the 2019 Kappa International Conference. We believe that this has set the scene for the days to come and have really highlighted key areas of concern. And we would like to thank you very much, guest of honor, for being with us this morning. Thank you. As we proceed, and I wouldn't be, I wouldn't want to be the one keeping you in the room, but I would like to just share with you a few announcements on the proceedings of the rest of the day. We are going to um, break for lunch in just a few seconds. Um, and of course, as you go for the lunch break, the protocol will guide you towards uh, the lunch room. Uh, but of course, feel free to take the cup of coffee that you should have taken a few minutes, not to say hours ago. Um, and apologies for that again. A second announcement also is that uh, we would like to encourage all of us to be back for the afternoon uh, sessions, which are going to be parallel technical sessions by two latest, 2 p.m. in the rooms. Uh, and uh, for those who will be uh, chairing the technical sessions in the afternoon, please be inside of the room of the technical session you'll be chairing 30 minutes before it starts. So one, one, uh, one p.m. and a half. Anyway. <laughs> 1.30. Um, and then, still on the technical sessions, uh, those who will make presentations uh, during the technical sessions are requested to submit their respective session chairs, the presentation that they will make at their session venues, that to facilitate um, the presentation. And last, information about the technical session and the venues. I should be having uh, on the screen the topics, the session venues, and the session shares, chairs on the, on the screen, or probably on the program as well. Uh, of course, each participant is encouraged to participate in the technical sessions and can choose uh, the, the technical session that they would like to participate in. And then, Last but not least, please feel free to pass by the registration area for registration, but also to collect your conference bags. This is it for me. Uh, I would like to thank you all for your participation, for, of course, your contributions, and look forward to really continuing the discussions and going more and more in-depth in the discussions that were started this morning during the technical sessions, of course, with the objective to come up with key way forward at the end of the conference. Thank you very much, and bon appétit.